Rosh Kodesh Sameach. This is the Yarim, or Y-H-R-I-M, newsletter for Rosh Kodesh, the first day of the sixth month of 5996 of the scriptural year. Uh, this is also the pagan Roman date of August 26, 2014. I pray that Israel, who is scattered throughout the nations of the earth, is having a blessed Rosh Kodesh today. Although there is few that actually keep Yahuwah's calendar, but there is always a remnant. He always has a witness. There is many Israelites in many different nations who are facing many problems, many issues, many tribulations. These tribulations and worse is coming to all the nations of the earth where Israel is scattered, including this nation. Although many people do not believe that, they don't think anything's ever going to happen. Unfortunately, very soon they're going to find out different. We'll get into that later in this video. On the first part of this video, we want to first go over some of the things with our ministry, updates that we've done, uh, other changes that we've made. It's been a month or so since we've sent out our last newsletter. Uh, this is the first video newsletter that we've done. Uh, this is also the first video that we've actually produced specifically for YouTube. The previous videos that we've done in past years were some teaching videos. Uh, mainly we only put those out on DVD at the time. Reason being is we didn't have the ability to get them on YouTube due to uh, issues with YouTube and mostly with the internet service that we had available at that time. Uh, it wasn't uh, fast enough to be able to do what we wanted. But we did what we were able. Thankfully, uh, things have changed. Uh, we now have a much faster internet and it has given us the ability to not only take the teachings that we had on DVD, I have re-edited all of those. Those are now live on our YouTube channel. Uh, all the links that I'll talk about in this video is going to be in the description box below the video here on YouTube. It will also be included in the uh, written portion of the newsletter that we send out, which will mostly just be the links. Uh, there may be a few other things included in the written portion, but it will mostly just be the links and the things that we're talking about in this video. Differences between the videos from here forward and videos we've done in the past. The teaching videos that we've done in the past, I spent hundreds of hours editing. Uh, those three teachings, probably 400 hours or more, uh, just to edit those three teachings, uh, besides being able to produce them and everything else, uh, besides being able to produce the DVDs. Uh, from here forward, this is strictly going to be YouTube videos. We're not going to be producing any more DVDs. Uh, any videos that we do produce, we're going to be uploading to YouTube now since we do have the capability. That way anyone uh, anywhere in the earth can be able to look these up, watch them, stay up with things that's going on. Uh, we may have some uh, video teachings in the future. I do not know. We'll see as we get to those, those things. Mostly, we're wanting to be able to produce the newsletter in a video format just so that it can reach more people. Uh, YouTube is a vast online community, so there's a, there's a lot of people that's there. There's a lot of opportunity for more people to find the information. So please, when you see these links, when you see these videos, send them out to your friends, post them on your Facebook pages, wherever, wherever you can send them out and be able to get them out to more people. Uh, we do ask that you thumbs up the videos. The reason for that, the more ratings that their videos receive, uh, the higher ranks that they do get on YouTube, the more opportunity for more people to see them. However, with saying all that, there's few people that want to know truth, but Yahuwah will get it to those who wants to hear. But in any case, these videos from here forward will have minimal editing. The reason being, it's more important to get the information out and to get as much information out there as we can. I do not have the time to edit these videos like we did in the past because we're not only 
working with all the things to do with the ministry. We also have a lot of outside work as well that we have to get done. Uh, we're working every day right now, preparing, trying to prepare the best that we can for the things that we know is coming, uh, the things that we know is here, as a matter of fact. For those of you that's followed our newsletters and has followed our website and things, you know that we was on the road for a year and a half. Uh, we were searching for a place that not only our family, but the rest of our assembly could be able to come to because we know what's coming and the things that's going to be needed. The internet is the biggest outreach that any ministry can have in these last days. This is why that it's talked about in the Word that in the last days knowledge will increase. It also talks about that the knowledge will be sent out throughout the earth. The internet is the way that that is happening. Uh, people have expected many different things. There's a lot of people still looking for uh, things to come. They look for uh, so-called revivals and all this stuff. It's not going to happen. The Word never states that. It never states that, that the people will believe, but rather that the information is available. It's the same as it was in the days of Noah. Noah taught for a hundred years, trying to tell people to get ready and to repent. They did not. So, Yahuwah told him to build an ark. He spent five years building an ark. That is in the scroll of Yashar. And because of the work that he done, the things that he done, and, and the preparations that he made, him and his household was protected by Yahuwah. It's the same thing as in these days. If we do not work, if we do not prepare ourselves, if we do not do the best that we are able, then we will perish along with the rest of the system. Work is always required. Yahuwah does not do everything. He requires us to work. He requires us to do everything that we are able. Once we do that much, then we pray that he provides whatever else is needed and required. We also believe that he will protect us as is written in his word that he talks about. We're going to get into all of that a little bit later in this video. In any case, it's important that we get as much information and teachings uh, out there to as many people who actually want to hear. The time is short. Night is coming upon this nation where no man can work. Some nations, this has already occurred. We're seeing the things happen overseas uh, and, and many other events. There's so many events taking place right now in such a rapid pace. Uh, nobody is able to keep up with them, yet the vast majority of people see nothing happening, especially in this nation. This nation is very isolated. And the propaganda that is put out on the news, people believe it 100%, and many other things. Uh, and on top of what all the things that the church, churches teach, the false teachings that they put out about the rapture and many, many other topics, uh, has put the people to sleep and put them in a state of relaxation. Uh, they are not preparing for anything, for the most part. They do not believe anything is going to happen, and if something happens, they believe they'll just be raptured, and they, will not, they do not have to do any work, they do not have to do any preparation, and they will not suffer anything. At least that's what they believe. But very, very soon, they're going to receive a major wake-up call. Unfortunately, it would also be too late by that time, because they will not understand the things that's taking place until they see it on their street. But before we go more into that, I want to go back to the updates to our ministry, to our websites. Those of you who follow our main website, yhrim.com, uh, you know that we were in the process of overhauling our site, uh, making a lot of major updates, a lot of major changes, uh, during which time a lot of links and teachings were down, a lot of things didn't even show up, backgrounds, everything else was moving. Uh, a lot of the work that we done was actually behind the scenes. It was mostly to do with the files on the server, the way that they were organized, and many other things. But some of the work was actually how the site itself is streamlined and organized now. Uh, we've tried to make everything easier to navigate and easier to find. Uh, we've also tried to make sure that everything is actually listed where it should be, including having all of the teachings on the teaching publication page. We have, however, added... Uh, some things to the, the main page, the home page, uh, such as there's a box on the home page uh, that is specifically uh, where we will post teachings about upcoming feast days. We also have another section for new teachings that we, is released. 
Uh, two of those is on there right now. The, all of these teachings, though, are all on the teaching publication page. I'll get into the new teachings uh, in just a moment. We've also added several pages, uh, and we've ha we have redone some pages. Some of the pages that we have added is our online video teachings. Uh, it is the three DVDs that we made over the past some years, all the way back to uh, 2007, 2008. Those teachings we released on DVD back at that time, as I said earlier. Uh, however, uh, they have been completely redone, re-edited, specifically for YouTube. And those is all uploaded on our YouTube channel, but we also have them on our online video teachings page. I've embedded the video into that page. You can go there and watch them. You can also click on the link at the top. It will take, it, take you to our YouTube channel. I will also be adding the YouTube channel link into the navigation menu. That's still something I have to do, as there is some other work that I still have to do to the website. There's a few other things that needs done, a few other things that needs fixed. But overall, the website is mostly complete. All of the teaching videos that we have on our website, on the online video teachings page, which is also the same teachings that's on our YouTube channel right now, uh, they are full length videos. They are not broken down into multiple parts. As we had to do uh, one video in the past, we did upload one teaching that I'll get to in just a second. The first teaching that we have on our YouTube channel and the online video teachings page on our website is the restoration of the scriptural Sabbath day and Yahuwah's yearly calendar. This was recorded on the 10th month of 5990 uh, on the Pagan Roman calendar. That was January 2009. Uh, it's a very good video. It's an excellent teaching video, especially for those who have not seen it, um, especially for those who are just learning the Shabbat. However, the most up-to-date teaching on the scriptural Shabbat, the Sabbath day, is the written documents by the exact same title which is on our website on the teaching publications page I also have a specific link just for that teaching on the home page the restoration of the scriptural Sabbath is a majorly important teaching uh, it is a foundational teaching that connects into so many other subjects every subject that deals with the calendar in any way whether it's the feast days the Sabbath the resurrection of the Messiah uh, when the temples were being dedicated, all of these things connect into the restoration of the scriptural Shabbat and Yahuwah's yearly calendar. It's a foundational teaching. Without the understanding of this teaching, there's many, many, many things in scriptures you will never be able to understand fully. People teach all kinds of doctrines. People uh, that keep Saturday. Uh, there's so many people that uh, are uh, totally against Yahuwah's calendar. Uh, which is a lunar solar calendar going back to Bereshith or Genesis 1.14. That's just one verse of many, many, many verses that proves his calendar out of his word. But it is a major foundational teaching. It takes a lot of study to be able to understand. Uh, you're not just going to sit down and, and read it for 20 minutes and, and, and know it or not know it. It takes a lot of study to be able to understand Yahuwah's calendar as does all of his teachings. But the calendar uh, is such a major issue. It takes more study for most people to understand because of all the false teachings that's been put out, because people are so used to a pagan Roman calendar and nothing else these days. That calendar has encircled the entire earth. All the nations of the earth use it. Uh, it is one of the major things that Satan has done to cause uh, uh, false teachings and confusion and to be able to cause Israel to break Yahuwah's calendar just as is written in the word he came to change times and laws and to deceive the entire earth this is one of the major ways that he has done so the lunar solar calendar is Yahuwah's calendar which he wrote in the heavens which no man nor Satan can touch or change uh, they've tried to hide it they've tried to manipulate it they've tried to do everything in the world to it but they can't physically change the sun and the moon and that is why he wrote it in the heavens. If he gave us a command to keep the Shabbat, he has to give us a way to be able to know when it is without relying upon man to tell him when. You don't rely upon a pagan Roman calendar to tell you that it's Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. That's your three major religions on this earth. His calendar is written in the heavens. It is in his word. It's written in his word. It's heading all through his word. 
He had to hide it in his word because if he didn't hide it, if it came out and just laid it out point blank, then man could change it, and they already would have. And in some instances, they've tried because of how verses were worded, such as is how man has tried to change the resurrection of the Messiah to claim that he arose on a Sunday or a Wednesday or whatever. All of that is absolute garbage. It, his word has nothing to do with the pagan Roman calendar. Yahusha, Hamashiach, the Messiah, when he walked on this earth, he was not keeping a pagan Roman calendar. He was not keeping Saturday. Neither at that time, by the way, were the Pharisees. The Pharisees at the time who controlled the calendar from the temple to some degree, they still were keeping the Shabbat. It's the one issue that the Pharisees never argued with Yahusha HaMashiach about. They never told him that it wasn't the Shabbat. But he was not keeping a pagan Roman calendar. He was keeping his father's calendar, Yahuwah, from his word, and that is what he taught. And that is what was known. And it's written in his word and hidden all through his word. The second teaching is listed on our online video teachings page on our website and also on the YouTube channel this is the restoration of the true Pesach or Passover. Uh, this was a live Passover service which was recorded on Abib or the first month of the 14th day. Obviously it was on pa Passover day, Pesach day of 5990 on the pagan Roman calendar. Just for reference purposes, this was April 20th, 2008. Pesach is another major teaching which there is many uh, false doctrines about. Just like all the rest of the Torah, there's many people that claim it was done away with. Uh, nailed to the stake, cross, many, many other things. None of that is true. Pesach is still in force today. It always has been in force. And it always will be in force. The only way to have a true Pesach is with the Pesach lamb, also to be able to do it at the proper time. There's so much confusion about when Pesach is. Many people go and, and they state that the Messiah kept the last Pesach with his disciples. That is false. Yahusha HaMashiach, the Messiah, was the Pesach sacrifice, the Passover lamb sacrifice. Therefore, he had to die at the exact time that the Passover lamb would have been slain, which means he could not have eaten of the last Pesach. What he ate was called a practice Passover or a teaching Passover, which was used to teach the younger men and the younger leaders how to keep it properly, all the things that had to be done, and many, many other things. It was an instructional Pesach. What the Messiah instituted at that time and kept with his disciples was the memorial dinner. The memorial dinner is the night of the 13th going into the 14th. That is the time of the wine and the unleavened bread and also when he washed the disciples' feet. The next night is Pesach, the going from the 14th into the 15th. Again, the most up-to-date teachings on this is our written teachings that are connected to this and also to Kag Hamasoth or Feast of Unleavened Bread and other surrounding feast days and events that took place. Uh, they are fully detailed, fully explained. The third teaching that we have on our online video teachings page and also on our YouTube channel is a teaching that uh, originally was on our YouTube channel, however, it was broken down into 10 different parts, made it a little bit cumbersome to watch, but it was the only way I was able to upload it back then uh, due to, like I said earlier, our internet at that time, and also some issues with YouTube, which they have now changed and made much, much better for uploading videos. That teaching is the 70 weeks of Daniel, the 1290, 1335, and 2300 days. Uh, that teaching was recorded in the eighth month, the second day of 5992, uh, which on the pagan Roman calendar was November 8th, 2010. The first time that teaching was taught was about four months before that. It was, it was about the fourth month of 5992. I spent four to five years trying to understand what the scriptural year was uh, today, not the Roman calendar year. I went back to when Adam or Adam was created and began to go through the generations. I set up many nights 
uh, usually way up until the early morning hours, uh, studying this, trying to work everything out, going generation by generation, uh, all through the scriptures. And Yahuwah helped me to be able to understand uh, a lot of different issues and problems that was in the scriptures and how to be able to work them out to find the answers that was needed. Uh, after four to five years, which was early 5992, matter of fact, just, just before that I taught it for the first time, he gave me the, the end of it, the full answer of it, which also got into the 70 weeks of Daniel, the 1290, the 1335 days, and the 2300 days. I spent, I spent many hours trying to understand this uh, to be able to know what was the scriptural year, what was the day and hour in which we're living. We knew that it was close. We didn't know exactly until we were able to understand this teaching. This is the reason I put it out back then on YouTube, the best I was able to do, uh, just to be able to get it out there what little that I could. Uh, however, hopefully this video will help more people. But now, the hour is very, very short. Uh, there's many, many events going on. We'll get into that in just a few moments. One other thing that I want to cover about updates to the ministry, uh, which is also going to be reflected in the, the teachings, the videos, and everything else. Uh, one, there's, there's two main changes that we have made. Uh, one of them is the pronunciation of the Messiah's name. We have come to a better understanding that the Messiah's name is pronounced Yahusha, Y-A-H-U-S-H-A. -H -A. Uh, we will be updating a teaching about the name that will include this, or we may even make a separate document. I don't know at the present time. Uh, I do not know when we'll be able to get that out, but when I do, we'll have it either in a newsletter, video newsletter, or written newsletter. We'll also be posting on our website, Facebook page, other ministry outreaches. Another change that we have made is to stop using the sound or letter V or Vav. The reason being, in the ancient Hebrew, there is no V sound, just like there is no J sound. That actually came into the modern Hebrew. It was a Germanic influence, and they changed the letter Wa to a, the letter Vav. They also added the V sound to the letter Bet as well. This is all modern changes. These are mod in the modern Hebrew, the Aramaic, uh, written form of the language. Uh, this was not in the ancient Hebrew. In the ancient Hebrew, it was the letter Wa, which in English we call a W. The letter Wa makes two sounds, either a U sound or an U, like a double O. Many people have unfortunately used the name of the letter as the sound. The name of the letter is wa. It does not make a wa sound. That's like saying w makes a w sound. That is not the case. This is where they got the pronunciation of Yahweh. yod he wa he is the four letters, but they pronounce the wa as wa, which is not the case. That's the name of the letter, not the sound it makes. The sound, again, is a U or a double O. That is why yod he wah is pronounced as Yahuwah. Just like yod he wah delet he is Yahuda. The letter Wah is not pronounced as a wa sound or a W. That is the name of the letter, not the sound. Another example of the modern Hebrew, where they're using the V, which again has been added, there was no V sound in ancient Hebrew, is in the name of David, or David. His name is three characters, Dalet, Wa, Dalet. Again, the Wa is a U or double O. To the best of my understanding, his name is pronounced as Daud, not David, not David, and not Dawid, which I've also heard. Again, they're pronouncing the wa as a wa sound rather than a u or double o. In all of our past teachings, which are being updated, one of the changes we're making is changing Yahushua to Yahusha. Also, some of the words that used a v like Shavuot 
we're changing to what they should be. In that case, should be Shavuot. Uh, in many, uh, in that case, should be Shavuot. Another example is Aviv, which should be Abib. These changes you see in all of our uh, updated teachings and all of our future teachings. However, uh, in the past video teachings that we've done, you will still hear Yahweh, Yahshua, Aviv, and many other things. Uh, we're not going to go through and change all those. Basically, it's because it's impossible without having to go through and re-record uh, those words over and trying to edit all the video over. That would take a lot of time to do, so we're not going to do that. Uh, at some point in the future, Yahuwah willing, we may redo these teachings and have new new video teachings about these topics. And at that time, they would be updated to the best of our current understanding. The last things I want to go over about the updates to our teachings, website, and other ministry things. Um, uh, one, as I've mentioned already, is our YouTube channel. Uh, we've actually had this channel for a long time. We didn't have a lot on it. Uh, however, that is going to change. We've got three teachings on there, as I mentioned before. Plus, this newsletter video and all future videos will also be posted to our YouTube channel. The link to our YouTube channel will be in the description box below this video. It will also be in the written portion of the newsletter that I send out with the link to this video. So any links, again, that I mention in this video will be in the written portion of the newsletter. They will also be just below in the description box below this video. So please visit our YouTube channel, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you will get any updates whenever we post videos. Uh, we've also got other things on there, uh, one, of, one of which is uh, videos that we have favorited. Most of those videos is Signs of the Times, current events is taking place. I haven't done a lot of that until just recently. However, I will be favoriting many more videos about current events, anything that's on YouTube. Uh, that is a Signs of the Times or other important information I will be favoriting. That will go into that playlist. If nothing else, just check out the titles just to kind of keep up with things. A lot of those videos will probably also be posted on our Facebook Current Events page. Look at our Facebook Current Events page. Uh, again, look that up. We have many, many, many articles, news articles, many events that's taking place all around the earth. And what is there is just a small fraction of the information that I go through. I, I only post the most pertinent information anymore because there's just so many events. Uh, if I spent all day, every day, just posting the stuff, uh, that's all I would have time to do. <laughs> and I, I, I barely make time uh, to be able to post what I do post. I do post uh, uh, several articles almost every day, or at least semi-daily, articles and videos, important information that's going on. Uh, important things that's happening. Again, we'll get into, we'll touch on a little bit of that here toward the end of the video. The next link I want to talk about is our Google Plus page. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to use this page for. Uh, I have posted a few current events on there. Uh, I may post uh, more of those in the future. We may use it more for communications or, or just to be able to link to our YouTube channel uh, for people that want to use Google Plus to keep up with that. Also going back to our main website, if you're not subscribed to our newsletter mailing list, uh, there's a button at the bottom of every page now in the Contact Us portion of the page. You click on that button, you put in your email address, and you will receive any future updates, newsletters that we send out. On our YouTube channel, I also recommend that you subscribe to our channel. Any future videos and, and other things that we upload, you will get notifications of. Uh, also, share this information with others, post it to your Facebook pages, your websites, other places uh, for your family and your friends and other people. Share this information so it can get to as many people out there who want to hear it. Yes, that number is few, but there is a few. Uh, we're doing this knowing that it's only a few, but we want to do the best that we're able to do to get the information to the few who do want it. Lastly, uh, updates on our website. There is two new teachings, which I mentioned earlier. Both of these were written by my IB, Moshe Yahu. First one is Revelations 8.12 and Other Signs. 
which talks about a lot of the signs that's happening right now that people do not even notice, they don't understand what's taking place. The other teaching is, was Shaul or Paul an apostle? And like my Abi said the other day, he never thought that a teaching like this would ever be needed, and unfortunately it is because of the amount of false teachings that's going on out there. People cast off Yahuwah's words so easily, anything that they do not like, anything that they do not understand. Uh, they, they, there is literally people that has ripped out of the scriptures, physically ripped the pages out of the scriptures of anything that they thought was written by Shaul or Paul. It's very sad to see. People do not understand what was, what was wrote. They've called him a false apostle to say that he taught against the Torah. Neither of those was the case. They just do not understand what is written. So my Abi wrote this teaching to address those specific uh, issues and the false teachings that is being put out on this subject. The last part of this video I want to touch on some of the signs of the times and recent current events that's taking place right now. I'm not going to go into very much in this video due to time. I still have to get this edited and get this sent out today. This is Rosh Kadesh. I want to get this sent out before uh, this evening hopefully. But there is many 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 current events that's taking place most people only is noticing what's on the news. Uh, those are important events that's taking place, uh, but they do not understand how the news is using this. The news is nothing more than another arm of the government. They are the media arm of the government. All the mainstream news is. Anything that is put out on the news is government propaganda. Uh, whether it be true events or not, they are using it to set up and prepare people for what is getting ready to happen. Uh, because it's events that they are creating. Uh, just for instance, one recent event, I just posted this to my Facebook page a few days ago. I think this is also on our Google Plus page as well. Uh, Fox News, someone at Fox News accidentally uh, published a, an unfinished article. It was just the beginning of an article. And they published it to two different websites, the foxnews.com. They also published it to Fox News Weekly. It was only up for just a few minutes. The title of the article was ISIS Militants Launches Attack on the U.S. History Repeats Itself, Actions Taken Following the ISIS Attacks. The date of the article was 9-11-2014. Uh, just after it went up, they changed the date to 9-11-1899, which is what is reflected into the screenshot that I posted. Uh, the reason they done this was trying to bury it in the archive so nobody would see it. And then just moments later, they took the article down altogether. So it was only up for just a few minutes. Again, it shows planned events coming up. Whether anything happens on 9-11 or not, I do not know. But they are getting things ready ahead of time. The news always done, does this for any kind of planned events. We've shown this many times in the past. We've posted many articles on our Facebook page and other places. This is not the first time that they've accidentally done something. Most of the time they'll blame it on somebody hacked into their system and posted whatever. This time, so far, to the best of my knowledge, I, I've tried to search and see. So far they've been completely silent on this and just acted like it did not happen at all. Uh, I've got both of the, the links. I've got the, the original link that was published. I've also got a link to the screenshot uh, posted on our Facebook page. And again, I've got this on our Google Plus page as well. There's many things that's taking place. What happened in Ferguson is nothing to what is coming. That was an event. The original thing that happened, the original event that happened with the officer shooting Michael Brown was probably real. Uh, I've heard conflicting stories on if the officer was badly injured or not. I do not know. In any case, it's just like Rahm Emanuel when he was in the White House with Obama. The statement that he made, never let a crisis go to waste. Ferguson is a perfect example of this. They were waiting for something to happen that they could use to be able to further the police state, to further their agenda. What happened in Ferguson mostly was to be able to put the propaganda on the news of people getting people used to seeing militarized police and also the military being called in. Either the same day or the day before, the military, the National Guard, was brought to the Texas border. 
There's a lot of people, a lot of conservatives, who said that this was a great thing. It is not. We talked about it on Facebook in the post that we made. I may have mentioned it in the newsletter. I can't remember. But when they first, it's been a few months ago now, when, they, when Obama first pulled the border patrol off of the border and had them doing paperwork and literally being chauffeurs for the illegal immigrants that were coming in, uh, leaving the border even more open than what it already was, even with the flood coming in of people, which again is orchestrated. They were busing people up there. They're actually going and getting people to come in. All of that is being orchestrated. When they took the Border Patrol off and they, the news articles came out stating as such, we posted on our Facebook page, this is being done so that they can in turn say that they don't have enough manpower to secure the border. They don't have enough people, enough personnel, so that they can in turn use that excuse to bring in the military to secure the border. It is all problem reaction solution. That's what they do. They create a problem to get a reaction from the people so that they can then implement a pre-planned What did they want to do? They wanted to put the National Guard or military forces on the border. This is not to keep people out. This is to keep people in this country with where the events that's getting ready to take place. All of this is being orchestrated. Another example of the exact same thing taking place is with the military. Obama is purging many members of the military, especially officers by the thousands, uh, also lower military as well. They are using the budget for the Department of Defense as a reason, as just an excuse. It's being orchestrated to drop the numbers of the military so that when the events, which are nearly here, they could begin any time, when these events start taking place across this nation, they will in turn say our military is spread too thin, uh, we don't have enough manpower, so we're calling in UN peacekeeping forces. Uh, the UN's already here, that's been seen, vehicles have been seen all over the country, uh, um, among many other nations, unfortunately. This nation has been taken over from the inside. It was conquered in 1776, not its independence as people think, but the events that's getting ready to happen uh, is going to collapse this nation. They no longer need the people of this nation. They no longer need this nation in place for other world economies and other agendas. Uh, this nation is finished in their eyes. They no longer have a need for anything that's in this nation. So this nation will be conquered and destroyed. So this nation is being divided up. Uh, the people that is in this nation, many events is getting ready to happen. Millions and millions of people is going to die and perish, whether it be from war or starvation. Like I said earlier about Ferguson, the, thing, the events that's happening there is nothing compared to what's getting ready to come. They're just generalizing it to the people to get people prepared and get them used to seeing military and police and think, oh, it's nothing, they're only there for our protection, uh, just as they do uh, with all the other laws that they implement. Some of the other events that's taking place is ISIS, um, the Islamic State. What we are seeing right now in the Islamic State, the Islamic Caliphate that is being set up, is what is written in Scripture. I'm not going to go through all the things that I had my notes on this today. Uh, I'm just about out of time. But this, the things that's taking place with ISIS, the Muslims, the entire Muslim world, is what is written and prophesied in Scripture. Uh, the Muslims, who are the Muslims? They are the descendants of Ishmael and Esau. Esau married the daughters of Ishmael. What is happening right now is the prophecy of the words that Yitzchak, Isaac, gave to Esau. In Genesis 27, 38 through 41, and Esau said to his father, Have you not just one blessing, my Abba, or father? Bless me, even me also, my Abi. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Yitzchak his Abi answered and said to him, See, your dwelling shall be away from the richness of the earth and away from the dew of heavens from above. And by your sword shall you live, and shall serve your brother, and it shall come to pass when you shall have the dominion, that you shall break his yoke from off your neck. 
And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessings with which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my Abi are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob, or Jacob. This is where the hatred that the Muslims have for anyone who has anything to do with scriptures in any way. They hate Yehuda first because they recognize them as the house of Israel. Um, however, they recognize Israel more so than what the house of Ephraim recognizes themselves. Most of the physical Israelites across the earth do not even know who they are. Very few do. Uh, Israel scattered into all the nations. That is why all the nations that Islam, the Muslims, have infiltrated. This nation is full of Muslims, and I'm militant Muslims. They've been coming to this nation for many years. We posted back three, four, five years ago about the training camps that was all across this nation at that time. Uh, the, uh, there was a Christian news agency that reported they went to them, they showed video from them, they took the information to the FBI, FBI said that they could do nothing because it was a matter of national security. We also showed many years ago how that the Muslims were coming across the southern border, and I don't mean just walking, they are literally driving vehicles, trailers, whatever, they are bringing weapons, who knows the things that they have brought into this nation except Yahuwah, however the governments have given them uh, vast amounts of weapons. They are being funded. ISIS was started and funded by the government, the U.S. government specifically, uh, just as Al-Qaeda was, which most of the members of ISIS is Al-Qaeda. Uh, it, it's not separate groups as the news tries to try to uh, proclaim. The Islamic Caliphate that's being set up right now will soon come against Israel, but the the members of ISIS and the other Muslim groups that has infiltrated all these other nations, they are waiting, they're bidding their time right here in this nation, and very, very soon, just like what was seen on the news in Ferguson, which was actually set up, by the way, because they want to implant these ideas into the minds of the American people. There was uh, behind the reporter and the man that he was talking with, there was other people, and one of those right behind him held up was holding a sign saying ISIS is here. Uh, members of ISIS and all the Muslims, they're all across this country. There's millions of them here. They're bidding their time. They're waiting for events to happen. They know that it's close. Uh, they're working with the government. The government wants millions of people in this nation to die. Many people will starve. Uh, many people will freeze uh, in the wintertime due to no power or, or whatever. Many people would be slaughtered by the militant Muslims like ISIS and other groups all across this country. Uh, and the government is not only allowing this, they are helping them, funding them and everything else. Uh, and the Muslims will be happy to, to do so. They want to be able to conquer all nations. One of the things that the Muslims and the governments, the so-called elite, have in common is order out of chaos. They both believe that they can achieve uh, their end goal after the earth is put through chaos. Uh, in the scriptures, this is called the Great Tribulation, which we are already in. We entered into the Great Tribulation the seventh month of last year. I hear people saying, well, I don't see anything happening. There's nothing happening here. Uh, none of these events are taking place. Do you believe that every event that's written in the scriptures has to take place on your doorstep before it starts? How about the people that's overseas in the Middle East right now? There's tens of thousands of people that's fled for their lives, 100,000 out of one city in one particular instance, that has fled for their lives. I guarantee you that there is some true believers in those regions. Uh, they are undergoing persecution. They're being slaughtered. That is happening right now uh, in many nations. It is about to begin right here. It's right on this nation's doorstep. It could begin any day. I look for it to start over the next few months. I don't know exactly when. I don't know what events will start first, uh, whether it be uh, suicide bombers going into malls or taking AK-47s and doing mass shooting sprees in malls across the country, or if it will be uh, lead to other events, such as a recent article, uh, a statement from a senator. Uh, again, this is something we've posted on our Facebook current events page. Uh, a senator stated that ISIS is developing ways to blow up cities. Well, how do you blow up a city? It takes more than just a suicide bomber. Uh, it takes more than just a large explosion. 
To be able to blow up a major city would take nothing less than a nuclear, a small type nuclear device. Uh, I do fully expect that multiple cities will be attacked with nuclear weapons at some point. I do not know when that's going to happen. We've talked about that in the past. Uh, it is coming. It is going to happen. They are going to take down this nation. What may happen before that possibly is poss a possible EMP type event or, if nothing else, just turning off the power grid. Uh, they have The government has the full ability to do that. Uh, they can also claim that ISIS has attacked uh, power stations or power grid areas, which they've already put in the articles that ISIS is making plans to attack the power grid. So they're setting the stage. They're getting the people ready. So when these events happen, people will readily accept everything that they were told. Uh, these events will be hitting this nation. It could, it could begin any time. It might still be a few weeks. might even be a few months away. Uh, I do expect at least some events to begin here in, over the course of the next couple of months. Uh, it, and it may be uh, by the time Sukkot comes, I do not know. Uh, it may be Sukkot, it might be after Sukkot, uh, which is only six weeks away at the present time from today. I do not know exactly what events will take place or what's going to happen, but we do know they're coming. The media is making that very clear. The government propaganda is making that very clear. Government officials and many others, uh, they are setting the stage. Uh, again, another article, there was a general in an interview saying that a 9-11 event is coming, and specifically he again mentioned 9-11-2014 being a, a specific day, uh, stating that the nation should be on DEFCON 1, which is the highest alert level. Uh, again, I don't know if something will actually happen on 9-11. It wouldn't surprise me. This is the 13th anniversary uh, since the 9-11 attacks, which if you know the numbers of the elite, you know... Uh, about the uh, numbers that they use in numerology and everything else, uh, uh, how important the number 13 is to them. Uh, you see it in many, many places along with many other numbers like 9 and 11. We've talked about and been telling people for many years now to get out of the cities. Some of the things that I just talked about is some of the reasons why. Uh, there's many, many other things taking place. The worst place to be when these events begin to fall is in the cities. Overseas, they are being forced to flee. Okay, It is just as it was in the days of Lot. What the scriptures was talking about in that instance is not only the sin that was taking place in the days of Lot for the reason that they were destroyed by Yahuwah, but also what took place during the destruction. Because Lot didn't leave the cities until the destruction was there, he left with nothing. He had the clothes on his back, he did leave with his family, but even with that, he lost his own wife, a member of his immediate family. If people right now in this nation, they still have a choice to leave before it happens, but it is getting very, very close. You're down to the final hours to leave. If people does not leave these cities until the destruction comes, you will leave with nothing, and you most likely will lose immediate family members. This is the reason that we have told people for many years now to get out of the cities. The worst place to be when these events hit is in the cities. It'll, it is also where it will begin. In the word, it, Yahuwah commands us, as we have spoken about many times, to flee into the wilderness. Where is the wilderness? There's many people that say, well, if you leave the United States, the United States is Babylon, that's the only nation that will be destroyed. So you leave the United States, you'll be fine, you won't suffer anything. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> Very easily seen, just like the nations overseas. Uh, what's happening there right now, many, many, many people are being killed, slaughtered, uh, beheaded, uh, and, and many, many more are suffering in many different ways. There's another large number of people that says that the United States will be completely spared and only other nations will be destroyed. Uh, they try to claim, well, this is a Christian nation and all these things. Uh, this nation will not be spared at all. Uh, it will come under judgment. It, it is coming under judgment. It will be destroyed. To what degree, I do not know. But many millions of people in this nation is going to perish. Many millions will die in the events that is coming uh, in, during this great tribulation time. In Gilyanah, Revelation 18.4, Yahuwah says, And I heard another voice from the Shamaim, the heavens, saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, so, so that you receive not of her plagues. 
What does it mean if you do not come out? Verse 5, For her sins have reached to the Shamayim, the heavens, and Yahuwah has remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and repay her double according to her works. In the cup that she has filled, fill it double to her. Verse 7, this is a very important verse also. How much she has esteemed herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she says in her heart, I set a Malka, or queen and am not a widow, and shall see no sorrow. Okay? That is a very important verse. We'll come back in just a moment. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Master Yahuwah Eloah who judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing far off for fear of her torment, saying, Woe, that great city Babel, that mighty city, for in one hour is her mishpat, or judgment, come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise any more. If you read the rest of the chapter, it basically states about how quickly and violently that city of Babel is destroyed. Who is Babylon? Who is the great city Many people say that it's only the U.S., and they also state that as long as people leave the U.S., if they flee the U.S., the United States, and go to other nations, they'll be fine, they won't suffer anything. There's other people that say that Babylon is any nation but the U.S. They say that the, that the United States is a Christian nation, or whatever reasons that they give, and that, if you, and that the U.S. Uh, will not be destroyed or suffer in any way, but completely spared. Both of these ideas are very, very wrong. The United States is the seat of the beast. It is the seat of Babylon. Uh, the seat is literally the seats of the UN, the United Nations, building in New York City. However, those seats are filled with the mouthpieces, chosen UN representatives from nearly all the nations of the earth. The destruction of the great city of Babylon will begin with the United States, the seat of the beast, but will quickly spread to all the nations of the earth. Uh, in verse 7, I mentioned it's an important verse. Who is the Malka, or queen, that is mentioned there? Uh, it's also, uh, she is also called the queen of heaven many times in scripture. Uh, specifically, Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah 7.18 states, The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the Malka, or Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings to other Elohim, that they may provoke me to anger. Also, if you read Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah chapter 44, uh, it mentions the Queen of Heaven at least four other times. Who is the Queen of Heaven? Depending on the culture, she has many, many names and titles, a few of which is the goddess Diana, uh, Mother Mary, and of all other people, Isis, which we were talking about earlier, uh, strangely enough, also carries the same name. Uh, I'm going to skip through a lot of this. Uh, there's many, many idols made by man's hands to the Queen of Heaven, uh, one of which I will mention is in Monument Circle in Indianapolis. If you go to Google Earth and you zoom in directly on the red dot which marks Indianapolis, it's literally setting right there at the base uh, the goddess Diana, which is another name, as I mentioned before, for the Queen of Heaven. One of the most prime examples known the world over uh, is none other than the symbol of the United States, the so-called Statue of Liberty. Uh, she is holding the eternal flame, and that's why you see the sun rays that she wears on her head. Uh, this is also the same image that is used many different times, such as in Indianapolis there. You also see it as the symbol or icon for Columbia Pictures, Columbia Movie Studios. 
Yahuwah's command for his people in Gilyanah, Revelation 12.6, the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by Yahuwah that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and sixty days. We are already in this time. This is the time of the Great Tribulation. Again, it began last fall on the first day of the seventh month, Yom Teruah. The 1260 days here in Revelation, which is also the 1290 days in Daniel 12.11, which has to be explained to understand how both of those are actually the same time period, began last year on the first day of the seventh month. As I mentioned before, we've heard a lot of people say that they don't have to do anything, they don't have to prepare, they don't have to flee, uh, they're just going to stay where they are and what have you. That's their choice. Uh, everybody's got a choice on what they want to do. Uh, Yahuwah's not going to make you do anything. Uh, however, the tribulation is here. Yahuwah's people is not in one nation. They're scattered throughout the nations of the earth. That's why the, th the events that's coming is going to affect all nations. Uh, the tribulation will reach, the judgments will reach all the nations of the earth. There's many events happening all around the earth today. I can't even begin to go into all the things that's happening, as I stated earlier in this video. I am going to go ahead and close this video here. I didn't get in many of the things that I wanted to talk about today. It uh, didn't have the flow that I wanted either. Uh, there's a lot of things that I skipped, but uh, be due to time constraints, I'm going to go ahead and, and have to end this newsletter today. Uh, I hope and pray that it is able to help somebody. Uh, I hope and pray it's been a blessing to someone today on this Rosh Kadesh. We pray that Yahuwah protects his people in the times that is here, the events that's getting ready to take place, not only in this nation, but all across the earth. We urge people that is in the cities or anywhere near the cities, uh, again, to get away from these areas. Uh, this is going to be the worst places that you can be. Get you and your families out of these places before the events begin. Uh, if you wait until the events, events are happening, uh, you will very much regret that decision. Again, we pray that Yahuwah helps and protects his people in the times and the that is here in the day and hour that we are in. And we pray that Kol Yisrael gets prepared for the return of Yahusha HaMashiach, the Messiah, as the day is and hour is fast approaching. Shalom, shalom, in Yahusha HaMashiach's blessed name.